everyone, how are you today? I hope that you're having a wonderful day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name is Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I generally feature content that is focused on knitting and spinning. In this video, I wanted to share with you all the range shawl that I made. Uh, it is a design by Andrea Mallory, and I will whip this off for you really quick to show you a close-up of some of the details of this design in case you're interested to know more about it, whether you're making your own or just interested to hear about the archives of things I've made. I made this shawl quite some time ago. Um, I will reference my Ravelry page, project page and let you know when exactly approximately I made this project, but um, it is knit from the small corner with a little stockinette stitch design. And then you move on to other patterns of texture before introducing another color um, with some brioche. And then you'll switch colors with the same patterns again and again and again, and introduce the third color in brioche, and then the fourth. And then after you've knit the fourth color, where you use a whole uh, bulk of that last color there, you switch into this kind of slip stitch pattern where you come back to all the others that you have left over. And um, don't look to me for this being correct. I think I might have messed up in reading the instructions or reading my right side from my wrong side. I think that when I made this project a long time ago, I wasn't using stitch markers to remind myself which side am I on right now, and I might have messed up that edge. But no worry, it's, you know, it's all right regardless. Um, but you might be wondering what yarns I chose for this pattern. I happen to own four totally random skeins of yarn in this general color story. One thing I used to do when I just got into knitting and I just fell deeply in love with yarn, I would pick up a skein here or there simply because I loved the color and I didn't really quite know what I wanted to do with it. I imagined I could make it into a hat or a small accessory or something down the road. I didn't really have any clue what I might make with the yarns that I was collecting at the time, but I realized that I had about four skeins of yarn that were all generally worsted weight. A lot of them were all two plies. Um, in fact, I think all of these yarns are two ply yarns. And I just realized one day in browsing Andrea's patterns that I could fit these four skeins of yarn into one shawl project and I was thrilled. I felt a huge sense of relief finding a project to work all of these four skeins into and I'm really glad that I did. It's a shawl that has gotten a whole lot of wear. I generally collect this exact color um, and so I feel like I can wear this shawl with almost any project I've made so far, um, even though it is a little bit loud, that bright yellow, but um, there's a lot of ways to wear this shawl um, and you can kind of feature different colors within it depending on how you wear it. So if I wanted to really feature that bright, bold yellow, which is the last color of um, the design that I chose, I could wear it something like this and it would be front and center. Um, you know, you can wear these triangular shawls in so many different ways. I really like to wear them in that fashion. I also like to just throw it over my shoulders. I do find, however, that because of the shape of the shawl, which I think that I've shown you, I think I've generally shown you the shape of it, but it's very long and skinny on one side and then a little bit bulkier on the other. It is asymmetrical. So it's really like a, a, it's a right triangle from that bottom corner there and it's, you know, quite long. Um, so when I wear it over my shoulders in this way, it um, is a little bit lopsided. It'll, it'll be kind of heavier on one side and longer on the other, which is fine. Um, I'll just kind of off center that back corner behind me so it kind of sits over to one side. Um, so that the weight is a little bit more evenly distributed and it won't kind of slip off or whatever. <laughs> um, if I want to kind of hide that yellow color, I might cross it over in front 
and then whip this behind so that it's just a little less prominent and I can feature more of the green hues to this design. So there's so much that can be done with these asymmetrical shawls to wear them in whatever way you want to or however you want to feature it. And it's just very soft. It's very cozy and I am not at all disappointed with the results of this making. I told you that I collected these random skeins and I'll just go into a little bit of detail about them in case you're interested. I don't know that any of these are purchasable at this point now, um, but I'll tell you where I got them. So the very first dark color here, this kind of variegated olive green, as well as this sort of variegated golden ochre color. These were both purchased directly from Good Karma Farm. When Brian and I got married back in 2016, we took our honeymoon by driving up to the state of Maine and renting a cabin off of Airbnb. And we took a few little road trips um, to visit some yarny places. And we stopped at the mill that is Good Karma Farm. I'd never heard of it before. I just you know, Google Maps searched and saw that it existed and we drove out there and it was just this couple with a mill and their um, barn area and they have alpaca and sheep and probably all kinds of animals. I remember they had a ton of animals there and it was really cool to check them out. And they were so welcoming and kind to us and I picked up a few skeins from them and they were um, both kind of like, not second quality, but they were kind of off measured skeins. They weren't full 100 gram skeins, so I got a really good price on them at the time and I was really glad to have bought them. And then they sat in my stash because I had no idea what I was going to make with whatever amount of yarn I had. And uh, then the second skein here, this one's probably my absolute favorite. It's this gorgeous, even olive green. This is a skein that I bought from my first visit at the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. There was this booth in one of the main barns and it was this this one woman who I believe grew, milled, or hand spun. I don't know if it was hand spun or milled, um, but she grew the fiber and she dyed the fiber with plants that she grew. This is actually botanically dyed. Uh, which one? This middle one here. And I was in love with her yarns. I could have walked away with a full sweater quantity, but I just couldn't afford it at the time. So I let myself buy one skein, not knowing what I would do with it. And then, as I mentioned, this is Good Karma. And then this one I picked up on a trip through Roanoke, Virginia. Um, if you're not familiar, Skein Cocaine on Instagram, um, she used to own the wool workshop. She since sold the yarn shop to another person who operates that yarn shop still. Um, but I used to be obsessed with visiting it when we would go over there to visit my sister-in-law while she was in veterinary school. She went to school out in that area. So uh, we visited a couple of times, once for her graduation ceremony and another time, anyway, it doesn't matter. But I would make Brian stop and visit this shop with me and they used to carry this brand of yarn called Sasari and they are a mill, I think also based in Virginia and they um, create all kinds of bold, solid colors. and. I just fell in love with this bright sunshine yellow. It just really stood out to me. And even though I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, I brought it home. And then again, as I mentioned, I realized I had more than enough yarn for colors, generally in the same color family, that I could knit into this one project. And I'm just so glad that I did. I'm so happy with the results of this project. And I wanted to share it with you, put it in my archive, of videos. I'd like to make a video for every single thing I've made um, that I still have held on to and I thought it was time to share this one. So I'm really glad that you've checked out this video. If you have any questions, anything that I haven't answered, leave, let me know in a comment below and I would be happy to answer whatever questions you might have. I wonder if you've knit your own rain shawl and how it turned out. I'd love to know what yarns you use. I think that this project would be a really good project for combining different hand spun skeins of yarn. Um, I know sometimes we start spinning and we make these bulkier yarns that we're not sure what we'll do with and we kind of make one after the the next again and again and then 
you know, one day you wake up and you have four skeins of yarn with no idea what to do with them. And perhaps you could combine them all into a project like this one. So I hope that you like it. And if you do, let me know. And if you don't, um, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really glad that this is part of my wardrobe now. I'm gonna put it back on. It's a little chilly today. You can't tell, but there's snow coming down behind my camera in the window there. And um, so I'm really glad to have this to wear. <laughs> if you haven't already given this video a like, please do. It helps me so much in growing my channel here on YouTube. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. When you hit the bell, you'll get notifications when new content is uploaded. If you want to connect with me on social media, you'll find me as Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry Instagram or Twitter. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and you take care.